Welcome to What's New, your channel for everyday solutions. Be sure to subscribe, share and like our videos. This is What's New. The man who helped turn Toronto into a high-tech hotbed. By Craig S. Smith. Toronto, as an undergraduate at Cambridge University, Jeffrey Everest Hinton thought a lot about the brain. He wanted to better understand how it worked but was frustrated that no field of study, from physiology and psychology to physics and chemistry, offered real answers. So, he set about building his own computer models to mimic the brain's process. People just thought I was crazy, said Dr. Hinton, now 69, a Google fellow who is also a professor emeritus of computer science at the University of Toronto. He wasn't. He became one of the world's foremost authorities on artificial intelligence, designing software that imitates how the brain is believed to work. At the same time, Dr. Hinton, who left academia in the United States in part as a personal protest against military funding of research, has helped make Canada a high-tech hotbed. Dictate a text on your smartphone, search for a photo on Google or, in the not-too-distant future, ride in a self-driving car and you will be using technology based partly on Dr. Hinton's ideas. His impact on artificial intelligence research has been so deep that some people in the field talk about the six degrees of Jeffrey Hinton the way college students once referred to Kevin Bacon's uncanny connections to so many Hollywood movies. Dr. Hinton's students and associates are now leading lights of artificial intelligence research at Apple, Facebook, Google, and Uber and run artificial intelligence programs at the University of Montreal and OpenAI, a non-profit research company. Jeff, at a time when AI was in the wilderness, toiled away at building the field and because of his personality, attracted people who then dispersed, said Ilse Trurenicht, chief executive of Toronto's Maoras Discovery District, an innovation center that will soon house the Vector Institute. Toronto's new public-private artificial intelligence research institute, where Dr. Hinton will be chief scientific advisor. Dr. Hinton also recently set up a Toronto branch of Google Brain, the company's artificial intelligence research project. His tiny office there is not the grand space filled with gadgets and awards that one might expect for a man at the leading edge of the most transformative field of science today. There isn't even a chair. Because of damaged vertebrae, he stands up to work and lies down to ride in a car, stretched out on the back seat. I sat down in 2005, said Dr. Hinton, a tall man, with uncombed silvering hair and hooded eyes the color of the North Sea. Dr. Hinton started out under a constellation of brilliant scientific stars. He was born in Britain and grew up in Bristol, where his father was a professor of entomology and an authority on beetles. He is the great-great-grandson of George Boole the father of Boolean logic. His middle name comes from another illustrious relative, George Everest, who surveyed India and made it possible to calculate the height of the world's tallest mountain that now bears his name. Dr. Hinton followed the family tradition by going to Cambridge in the late 1960s. But by the time he finished his undergraduate degree, he realized that no one had a clue how people think. I got fed up with academia and decided I would rather be a carpenter, he recalled with evident delight, standing at a high table in Google's White on White Cafe here. He was 22 and lasted a year in the trade, although carpentry remains his hobby today. When artificial intelligence coalesced into a field of study from the fog of information science after World War II, Scientists first thought that they could simulate a brain by building neural networks assembled from vast arrays of switches, which would mimic synapses. But the approach fell out of favor because computers were not powerful enough then to produce meaningful results. Artificial intelligence research turned instead to using logic to solve problems. As he was having second thoughts about his carpentry skills, Dr. Hinton heard about an artificial intelligence program at the University of Edinburgh and moved there in 1972 to pursue a Ph.D. His advisor favored the logic-based approach, but Dr. Hinton focused on artificial neural networks, which he thought were a better model to simulate human thought. His study didn't make him very employable in Britain, though. So, 
Ph.D. in hand, he turned to the United States to work as a postdoctoral researcher in San Diego with a group of cognitive psychologists who were also interested in neural networks. They were soon making significant headway. They began working with a formula called the backpropagation algorithm, originally described in a 1974 Harvard Ph.D. thesis by Paul J. Werbos. That algorithm allowed neural networks to learn over time and has since become the workhorse of deep learning, the term now used to describe artificial intelligence based on those networks. Dr. Hinton moved in 1982 to Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh as a professor, where his work with the algorithm and neural networks allowed computers to produce some interesting internal representations, as he put it. Here's an example of how the brain produces an internal representation. When you look at a cat, for some reason cats are a favorite subject of artificial intelligence research, light waves bouncing off it hit your retina, which converts the light into electrical impulses that travel along the optic nerve to the brain. Those impulses, of course, look nothing like a cat. The brain, however, reconstitutes those impulses into an internal representation of the cat, and if you close your eyes, you can see it in your mind. In AI, the holy grail was how do you generate internal representations, Dr. Hinton explained. Interesting as those internal representations were from an academic point of view, computers were still too slow to recreate them in a way that mimicked the brain. At that point, Dr. Hinton was becoming disillusioned with the politics of the United States in the Reagan era. He also didn't like that most artificial intelligence research was funded by the United States military. Canada beckoned with a research position at the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. He moved to Toronto and eventually set up a program at the institute that is now called Learning in Machines and Brains. He also joined the University of Toronto as a professor of computer science though he confesses that he has never taken a computer science course himself. By 2012, computers had become fast enough to allow him and his researchers to create those internal representations as well as reproduce speech patterns that are part of the translation applications we all use today. He formed a company specializing in speech and photo recognition with two of his students at the University of Toronto. Google bought the business. So Dr. Hinton joined Google half-time and continues to work there on creating artificial neural networks. The deal made Dr. Hinton a wealthy man. Now he is turning his attention to health care, thinking that artificial intelligence technology could be harnessed to scan lesions for cancer. The combination of the Vector Institute, a surrounding cluster of hospitals and government support, he added, makes Toronto one of the best places in the world to do it. Welcome to What's New, your channel for everyday solutions. Be sure to subscribe, share and like our videos. This is What's New.